picture this. Jess and Tim are on a date. During this date, uh, Jess realizes that Tim has a way with words unlike any other guy she's dated. So she decides to go on another date with him and another and another and another until she wakes up one random morning in the trunk of a locked car, confused and horrified. How did she get there? Um, did she really have that much to drink the previous night? Um, how could someone who seemed so normal turn out so psychopathic? So in my talk today, I'm going to brush over what constitutes abnormality in personality disorders, and then I'll get into one personality disorder, or PD in particular, so that we can better understand Tim's behavior. So starting off with um, our first criterion for abnormality, deviance. So individuals with PDs have a collection of traits known as the bad five personality traits. So these are negative affectivity, detachment, antagonism, disinhibition, and psychoticism. Importantly, these traits exist on the extreme ends of the big five personality traits, which are also listed here as neuroticism, extroversion, agreeableness, conscientiousness, and openness to experience. So um, we all exist on these spectrums to some degree, and again, those with personality disorders exist on the extreme ends of the spectrums, illustrating this deviance. So more criterion for abnormality, we just touched upon deviance. Um, we're going to get into distress and dysfunction. So starting off with distress, this is usually experienced by um, the individuals who are closest to the person with the disorder. Um, and that's because personality disorders are considered largely egocentric, meaning that the person with the disorder doesn't view their symptoms as problematic, which, as you can imagine, largely complicates both diagnosis and treatment of personality disorders. Moving on to dysfunction, um, this illustrates how these individuals have difficulty carrying out day-to-day -day tasks, and there's dysfunction seen particularly within social interactions, whether that be with family, friends, or romantic partners. So the DSM-5, which is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for Mental Disorders, um, it's used to classify and diagnose mental illness. Um, it Within the DSM-5, there is um, one personality disorder termed antisocial PD. Um, and since, again, we're interested in understanding Tim and his behavior, um, we're going to touch more on this personality disorder in particular. So it's known that more men are diagnosed in comparison to women. Um, some traits to note include impulsivity, um, they're irresponsible, deceitful, and manipulative. Um, and they also show no regret or compassion towards other people. So as you can probably imagine, treatment for antisocial PD is very difficult, again, largely due to the egocentric nature of the disorder. Um, and oftentimes, individuals with the disorder are in prison because of the high criminality rates seen amongst this population. Um, so if that's true, then they receive little to no treatment because um, prison mental health um, resources are lacking. Okay, so moving on and uh, answering the question that we first set out in answering, what can explain Tim's behavior and Jess's demise? So I hope it's clear now that Tim could be classified as someone uh, who has antisocial PD, but he specifically would be a psychopath. And psychopaths defer in that they have higher IQ levels. Um, so this translates to less overt um, criminal behavior because even if they do engage in criminality, um, they're less likely to be caught and therefore we see less imprisonment amongst this population. Uh, so some traits to note include very high charisma levels. Um, they have lots of manipulation tactics. Um, there's a lack of empathy and remorse that is excessive. Um, and then murders, if they do occur, which they don't oftentimes, they're purposeful as opposed to random. Okay, so what should we take away from the story of Jess and Tim? Well, a Canadian psychologist who has studied psychopathy for over 25 years estimates that there are nearly 2 million psychopaths that exist in North America alone. So keeping this in mind, if we want to avoid getting caught up in a mess like Jess did, we should one, know traits that hint at potential psychopathy, and two, avoid romantic entanglement with people who exhibit such traits. Thank you.